Yes. So, hello everyone, I'm uh, Trifon Zanetis, and uh, I will be talking about uh, tech entrepreneurship. Uh, first of all, let's see how many of you already know what tech entrepreneurship is. Let me see some hands, please. Okay. So, I will give a small introduction about tech entrepreneurship. Uh, Stanford says that uh, it's uh, taking a technology idea, uh, finding a commercial opportunity, getting the, resource, the resources like talent and capital, figuring out uh, how to market the idea and then how to grow uh, the idea. I just say it's uh, being a geek with a business mindset, just to make it easier. I mean, for example, my, Mark Zuckerberg didn't know about all of these things. He left Stanford because it was that complicated. So it's just being like a geek with a business mindset. Uh, so let me uh, share with you my story. Uh, since I can remember myself, I was always uh, into technology. I, I remember I was tearing down my old computer just to figure out if I can just assemble it back together. Uh, so uh, to support my uh, passion about breaking things, I, I decided to do a bachelor in electronics because uh, I didn't want to be just the guy who breaks things, you know. Um, so uh, after that, uh, I wanted to learn how to hack the brains out of these machines. So that's why I came to Denmark and I did my master's uh, here in DTU uh, on computer science. So I think now we are th at the point that uh, you are wondering, how can this geek know about entrepreneurship, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, while I was doing my master's students and I uh, had some uh, work experience also, uh, but while I was doing my master's uh, stu studies here, I, I got involved in the Stardust uh, DTU and uh, I fell in love with entrepreneurship. So what is Startup DTU? Startup is uh, the startup community of DTU, which is run by volunteer students, uh, with a passion to uh, help student entrepreneurs and also to uh, promote entrepreneurship in Denmark. So uh, when I joined, Startup had two main uh, programs. The startup uh, program where uh, the student teams, the startup teams, uh, can apply and get uh, all the help they need from my, my relative mentors. And uh, Demo Day was the other program where all these, uh, st these startup teams can get visibility and uh, really uh, nice uh, connections such as investors, partners and, and, and more. But something was missing. Can you figure out what? Okay, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what was missing is that uh, the students who had no teams they could not apply for the program, and that was a, a really big uh, thing. So what I did, I started working on a platform where uh, students can uh, meet, students with different competencies can meet, and uh, make uh, startup uh, teams. So I called it Build Your Team. Uh, then I, uh, we were working on these three programs, and uh, four months later I was elected as uh, the new president of the organization. So my responsibilities have changed, and I had to mess with team management, partnerships, and growth. You know, a geek messing with these things. <laughs> Who could expect? Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, three months later we were awarded as the best human driven initiative of 2015 <laughs> for promoting entrepreneurship in Denmark. And I want to thank my team for that. <laughs> So since then I've been working on figuring out ways on how to enable people to spread uh, their ideas, how to uh, make something out of them. Um, so uh, in my experience, uh, most of people think that the idea is the main ingredient of a startup. Uh, but uh, I, I have to say that uh, a nice idea can lead to a very, should lead to a very clear vision. Uh, to a great team and also to a great execution. If you have this, your uh, your uh, success is more uh, more. Yeah, yeah, you will succeed probably. Um, so uh, what I say is that a great team needs to uh, be inspired so they can follow correct steps for the same vision, and that's really important. So uh, let me give you some advice. Uh, uh, the advice I can give you out of this experience I have. So first of all, do what you love. That's really important. Some people think that uh, love what you do is what, what you should think about. But no, that's totally different. You should do what you love. If you do what you love, you will do it right. You will, uh, you will spend all this time anyways at your job. So why not do what you love? It's that simple. It might sound simple, but it's not. Anyways. <laughs> so uh, also, you need to believe in your idea, but be open for feedback. A lot of uh, people think that their idea is the best, the greatest idea they can find. Uh, but uh, so they don't uh, talk about their ideas with other people. But the thing is that eventually you will need to, uh, to sell this idea, either a product or a service. So, so you need to uh, learn what your customer expects from you. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, the third thing is that you need to invest in your startup and you need to invest time, money and everything you have. Uh, if you don't do it, no one will. So you need to show that to the other people. <laughs> uh, that's really important. Write things down. Uh, a lot of people talk about ideas and uh, uh, just like to have a beer and discuss about ideas. That's really nice and we call it brainstorming even though it's with beers and anyways. But uh, <laughs> it's really important to write things down. You need to write your mi uh, minimum viable product down, uh, make a business model canvas and do drawings. Like Drawings help a lot to figure out how these ideas that you have in your brain can be put in a paper. <clears throat> and it's easier also to describe your idea to other people, to investors and anything. Uh, now it's uh, build, a, uh, build a team of A players, and uh, that's really important. Uh, Guy Kawasaki, I think everybody knows him here, uh, said that one of the greatest things that uh, Steve Jobs taught him was uh, to always hi hire A players. And that's because if you hire a B player, a B player will hire a, hire a C player. And a C player will hire a D player. And that's because everybody is afraid of losing their jobs. <laughs> so uh, you need to hire A players. Um, and uh, since we are talking about tech entrepreneurship, you need to, if you can, you need to patent the technology. It's really important when you talk to investors or anyone uh, that, and asking for money, it's really important to show them that you have a patent. So uh, the last advice I have to give you is get inspired and inspire others. That's really important because uh, uh, we live in a world that we should do that. A lot of people are afraid that, uh, oh, I don't have the job I want, or blah, blah, blah. You need to inspire people to do what they love to do. So uh, you can get inspiration from student talks that I uh, usually take <coughs> inspiration from this uh, website like TechCrunch, Kickstarter, YouTube, or just Google inspiration. You will find a lot of things. Um, so uh, you can check this uh, advice from Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, uh, Rules for Success. I won't tell them this now, you can just see them next. And uh, now I have two videos to show you. <coughs> Uh, one is for smart lenses and the other one is for communication without borders. So I hope you enjoy them. No, let's go to previous with them. Yeah. Sound. Google said this week that it's testing a smart contact lens that could help people manage <coughs> diabetes, which affects almost 400 million people across the world. And that's expected to grow by quite a bit in the next couple decades. So it's no wonder people took notice when Google announced this lens, which can track your glucose through your tears. There's a tiny chip embedded on the lens that, if it works correctly, could eliminate the inconvenience and the pain involved in diabetes management. But Google's not the only one working on this type of technology. A team from Sweden designed a lens that has a fuel cell that can not only monitor glucose, but actually create small amounts of power. A Swiss company called Sensimed Triggerfish created a similar lens intended for glaucoma patients. And Google's version originated with University of Washington and Microsoft, which was once home to the lead researcher on the project. And other than the obvious medical potential, a lot of people have been speculating about what else smart lenses could be used for. The Microsoft research video from 2011 talks about the natural user interface vision of the lenses that do much more than just act as sensors. Walking down the street, I could put people's names up, people that I recognize, people that I might want to recognize, information about them, the possibilities are endless. Other clues to Let's where tiny chips can take us? Put this in your ear. Put it in your ear. Like that? Yeah. So to conclude, I, I would uh, like to share with you two uh, really nice quotes that I took uh, from Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, uh, two tech entrepreneurs that have already changed this world. Uh, so first of all, uh, follow your heart and intuition, they somehow already know what you truly want to become, and uh, move fast and break things. Uh, thank you very much, and I urge you to con connect with me by following this link or the QR code. Thank you very much for today.